Hello, welcome to Abiding Life Studios. I'm Noah Wells. Today I have with me Shay Wells. Hi. Hello. <laughs> and we also have Steve Reinhardt with us. Hi, Noah. Hi, Shay. How are you? Good, good. I'm feeling good. How are you guys? We're doing good. Great to be with you. Yeah. Looking forward to um, uh, another great podcast. And um, is it okay if I give like a couple updates? We got some feedback. Sure. I got a feedback from a person that I've never met, but I'd love to meet named Joni, mm. uh, who's also, um, she's, she's survived cancer for almost 10 years now and uh, is a listener and likes uh, the fun mm. podcast. What really likes the Chase participating now, which <laughs> I like too. Uh, so I just want to shout out to Joni. Thanks for the great feedback and, uh, and you've given us another great idea for a podcast that we'd like to do in the future. Yeah. Just kind of dangle a carrot here a little bit is we'd love to do one on uh, loneliness, feeling lonely. Cause I think we have something we probably all feel from time to time, but mm -hmm. probably don't actually tell each other yeah. when we're feeling lonely. And uh, so, so we talked about that. We'd like to do a podcast on loneliness, but today we're going to do one uh, on our emotional concept of God. Oh. Yeah. And uh, we've, we did one on these with uh, our, our great brother, Mike Yankee, uh, oh, maybe a year and a half ago, yeah. maybe two yeah. years yeah. ago, a couple of years ago. And, um, and so, but we'd like to do it again with, since Shay brought up some things in our last podcast, uh, this was kind of um, uh, the next step. So, is it okay with you if I explain just a little bit about it? The yeah, emotional please process. do. So this was something that Mike uh, came up with, your dad came up with, and it's, a, it's really an uncovering tool. Uh, we, and I think you might have posted it on the website or on the... Yeah, uh, the old one had to. We're trying to get it on the new one. It should mm -hmm. be on soon. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, I mean, it's really simple. It's just a few questions. And, and the idea behind it, and, and I may be mistaken on a lot of this stuff, so uh, it's just my memory's kind of foggy these days. And, but the emotional concept of God exercise, and it's not a test, it's an exercise, it's a spiritual, what I call a spiritual exercise mm -hmm. that uh, is, is used to uncover like driving what's really the beliefs, the beliefs that are driving our behavior and our feelings. Yeah. And, but, and so but we kind of, you know, like if I asked you, like, you know, what's the, you know, why are you tempted to be angry sometimes? Mm. You, you might have some ideas, but this, will, this tool helps us to, to draw out from deep within us what's, uh, and kind of uncover what those driving factors are. And then not only, and not stop there, but kind of like reprogram ourselves to with the truth. Yeah. So, so does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Any questions about that? Not for me. Yeah. Let's let's get into it. So the so the real the, and the I just like to like throw out an um, illustration. You know, like if you had um, uh, uh, if you're in India or Nepal and you're riding across, riding through the jungle on an elephant. And there's a, and you've got this little teeny tiny boy up there with a stick, and he's just sitting on top of the elephant, and he's, you know, like taps it on one side or the other, and the elephant does whatever he wants. Um, if I were to ask you, like, who's stronger? Who? What would you say? Well, I think the majority of people would say the elephant. Yeah, for sure, the elephant is stronger. The elephant can like knock down trees. It's just so much fun to be on an elephant and have them. It's, you know, it's like being on your own personal Jeep, only the trees are like this big around and the elephant will go up and put its forehead against the tree and push over this massive tree. It's like this, you know, I'm sure it's illegal, uh, but, <laughs> but, the, but it's just so amazing. And then the elephant can pick it up with its trunk and do all sorts of things. It's massively strong. Mm -hmm. uh, and if the and if it, it gets scared or doesn't listen to the guy who's directing it, uh, you know they're really uh, super dangerous. Uh, mm. So, 
and, and so in my illustration, the, the elephant in our illustration is like our emotions. Mm. You know, when the emotions are going, uh, they're super powerful and we don't recognize the power behind them and our beliefs and the beliefs that are actually behind the uh, emotions. And so what we're doing in this exercise is we're recognizing those powerful beliefs that we have uh, behind all our behaviors because we act out, at least I do. I'm not sure about everybody else, but my, my actions uh, and uh, behaviors always follow what I believe, mm -hmm. my deep down gut belief. So this is an uncovering tech exercise to look at those beliefs and, and then to be able to go, oh, maybe I like those beliefs. Maybe they're, maybe they're doing something that I, want, I don't want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe they, you know, for me, uh, they may or may not be helpful. And then at that point we can go, okay, well, so what's, uh, what beliefs can we uh, exchange? We can't just like not stop, believe. we can't, like for me, we can't stop believing something. I have to put something else in its place. Right. Uh, it's, it's like I can't run my car without oil. I just want to change the oil. Mm -hmm. And so we want to, you know, that'll be like one of the steps we'll look at 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 the tail end is let's, uh, well, number one, does Shay and you and me, do we want to keep these beliefs? Right. Uh, and number two, if we do, great. If we don't, let's exchange them mm -hmm. for something that we actually want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. So, so, so the, there's a kind of a key here to, uh, to do this exercise for our listeners. You may or may not have it, but uh, there's a, a real a couple of rules. There's no right or wrong answers uh, that you can just put down exactly how you feel. And it's about how you feel, not what you think or not what's the right answer or what you taught, got taught in church or last week's sermon mm -hmm. uh, or something you heard on the radio we're read in a book. It's how you feel uh, right now in this moment. And so I'd like you to, then the second rule is to answer these questions, how you feel uh, at your worst moment um, and from your gut. So, and, and the reason we want to answer them how we feel at our worst moment is because at our worst moment, those beliefs are coming through loud and clear the beliefs mm -hmm. that we have that are behind these feelings and behind our behavior uh, when we're tempted to go mm, turn to one of our addictions or our idols, those feelings are super strong. And so we want to like, if you, so if you could uh, work with me and we'll, and I'll imagine myself at my worst moment. Uh, and, um, and then we'll just go through these questions. Okay. 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 So for, we'll, so we'll all answer these questions together and uh, just take us a, a minute. You might already have them answered. So when I think about being God at my worst moment, I feel. And with God. I want to nervous. Okay. Nervous for me. Nervous, that's great. Okay. When I think about being with God, I feel unworthy or not good enough. Okay. And when I think about feeling with feel uh, uh, being with God, um, I feel distant mm. and alone. Mm. Okay, that's good. Uh, so so um, Noah said for this one nervous. Shay said uh, unworthy and not good enough. Not good enough. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then our next question is, at our worst moment, uh, when I have to trust God, I feel? Mm, probably scared. You took mine. Oh, well, get your own. <laughs> I, I feel scared, and my thought behind it is like, I'm scared because what if he doesn't show up? So I have to trust him, but what if he doesn't follow through? What if he doesn't show up? So that's what scares me. Yeah, it's, it's scary. Um, and and I, I feel angry. Mm. Mm. I, I feel angry and yeah. um, mm, disappointed. 
Yeah. So, and we're talking about how we feel at our worst moment, and we're just looking yeah. at our feelings. So, so okay. So, for our third question, um, and this one's kind of a feeling one too. When I when I think about God, I wish, and it's fill in the blank. Uh, yeah, what I put, um, I wish he would kill me. Yeah, I hope he's not listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, he hasn't yet. He hasn't yet, yeah. yes. Yeah. Woohoo. Um, when I think about God, I wish he was more vocal without me having to search. Yeah. <clears throat> and when I think about God in my worst moment, uh, I just wish he would answer. Mm -hmm. mm. I think that's so common for a lot of us. It's like, just want you to answer. I'm tired of asking the same thing. I'm tired of searching. I'm tired of mm -hmm. like, just say it. Just yeah, say something. I, yeah, yeah. Maybe another way would I would uh, I would say just be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always feel like there's a big piece of plexiglass in between us. I can see him, but I can't hear him at all. So of course that makes me very angry. Yeah. <laughs> and for, I would guess angry and frustrated. Yeah. yeah. It'd be so frustrating to not be, to be able to see somebody like you guys were messing with me before we started the podcast, <laughs> pretending you couldn't hear me. It was frustrating. <laughs> Uh, help you, Steve. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, uh, sometimes for our fourth question is sometimes I get angry with God when. Hmm. You want to go? Let me think. When I don't get my way. That's when I get the most angry is when I don't get my way. <laughs> Yeah, so no, another way to another way to say that would be that uh, when he doesn't listen to you or when he doesn't care about you. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think that's that's an important um, thing you brought up, Shay. When we're doing this exercise, uh, it's not it's not to turn into a exercise in self blame. Um, mm -hmm. I, think I could blame myself for not getting my way. Uh, it's a, it's actually the flip side of that is what's, you know, what's that? Uh, like everybody wants to get their way. So it makes sense that you survive. Getting your way is like part of surviving, you know, it's like, yeah. it's yeah. like eating. And so what's happening to in you is that you're not getting your way. All right. Yeah. And so he, he's not giving you yeah. uh, what you exactly. want. Well, and if I don't get my way, that means that most likely there's a lesson I need to learn. And I don't want to learn a lesson. I don't want to go through growing pains. I don't want anything like that. So if you just give me my way and give me what I want, then I won't have trials or hard times or lessons to learn. So just give me my way mm -hmm. and then we can just move on. Yeah. It's the easy route. I just want easy route. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So 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 Noah, how about you? Sometimes I get angry with God when I, I put disappoints me. So I guess it'd probably be about the same that you guys are talking. Uh-huh. When he yep. And sometimes I get angry with God. Um well, uh, often, a lot, I get angry with God. Um, I think for these days, uh, I, I would say when he doesn't care. Mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Uh, 
So the, uh, then a f fifth question is, it frustrates me when God wants me to listen. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like you were saying that towards me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> listen to Shay. It frustrates yeah, you. Uh -huh. Listen to my wife. It frustrates um, me when God wants me to trust him. Okay. Trust him. And uh, for me, it frustrates me when God wants me to do anything because his, it seems like everything he wants to me to do is impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Frust just frustrating as hell uh, yeah. because, uh, because he's God and I'm just me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's, so it's like, uh, you know, it's like, hey, Steve, go take a, why don't you just pop out your door and go fly across Colorado Springs and check out the COVID situation? Yeah. yeah. And it's like, well, is any other request you got for me there, God? Yeah. Uh, so anything I, else, please. <laughs> yeah, because everything at my worst moment, everything feels impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. for him to ask me anything would be if he okay, wants me cool. to do anything, uh, it's impossible for me. Okay, how about number six? Uh, I really enjoy God when mm, when everything's going good. I agree. That's my answer to you. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, what about you? Well, I, I, I like that too, but like, can I ask the question, not to be a wise ass, but uh, when is everything going good? When I'm asleep. <laughs> no, your shoulder, your shoulder right now. My shoulder's messed up, I know, so I don't know. I think it's when, like, for me, it's like when the big things are going great because there's always like something, right? Like, there's always a kid who needs something, or like you want sleep, or so there's mm -hmm. always something. But I think when like the big things are going great, and I think for us, because we've been through so many big things that it's like when we have enough finances to just pay our bills when mm -hmm. Ainsley isn't struggling with her anxiety and throwing things at people when mm -hmm. you know when our marriage is great ish because it's still a marriage with mm -hmm. two imperfect people so I think it's when our big things are going great then that's when it's really enjoyable mm -hmm. to be in that relationship with God because there's always still those little things, but I feel like when the big things are going great, then you feel like life is great. Okay, so so Noah Noah said when everything's going great, you say when the big things are going great, and I and I'm saying uh, I really don't enjoy them at all <laughs> <laughs> because. Uh, because I have the same standard you have is like the big things. Uh, I got holes in all my bones. That's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty big. Yeah. And that's not going to change. Um, so for me, it's like, I don't enjoy it. I, I you know, I don't yeah. uh, at my worst moment. I don't enjoy him. Uh, yeah, even, even true. though I tell myself I really should, you know, yeah. And, yeah. but I don't. So <laughs> yeah, I can see. So I, I just was not expecting that like, answer. <laughs> uh, so, so, uh, number seven, uh, the one thing I would change about myself to please God is, um, for me, it would just be to talk to him more because I like to just avoid him so that I don't have to do anything. <laughs> so for me, it's just that I would just talk to him more would be what I would change about myself. Okay. So do you would talk to him more and not avoid him? Yeah. Okay. I guess for me to stop, to change it to myself would be to stop picking the wrong road. Okay. Stop picking the wrong road. Because I do it nonstop. All the time. Okay, stop picking the wrong road and 
Um, the one thing I would change about myself to please God is uh, I'd have to do what you kind of mentioned though, is I'd have to change everything mm -hmm. uh, because of the, because like I never seem, you know, I had somebody uh, this past week, um, we were, we were talking about criticizing uh, ourselves and, and this person had criticized me and we were, we were talking about, um, um, I, I don't remember, but exactly the, but I do remember the, the, uh, the thing that I came back with, with when we were, when she was criticizing me was that it was like, you know, Barb has, Barb told me all these things. She had criticized me for not being a safe person to be with, mm. and, you know, and I can't agree with her more. It's like, oh my gosh. Uh, the Bar Barb has told me that before, and I said, and, you know, I, I, you really get me because there's a part of me that isn't safe. Uh, not most, most people don't actually get that about me, but you get it. Uh, and what I like, I used to tell Barb is like, and, and I'm stuck with myself 24 mm. seven, you know, like you get a break from me sometimes, you know, yeah. I don't. And I think that's uh, kind of behind my answer to that question. Seven. The one thing I'd change about myself to please God is well, I'd have to like start at the bottom of my shoes and work my way up right. uh, because I feel so defective and flawed at my worst moment Definitely. and hopeless. Yeah. Uh, so, um, okay. So then number eight, uh, this one's a good one. When I think about God's commands, I feel not good enough. Guilty? Guilty, yeah. I mean, there's so many words that come to my head. Not good enough. Mm hmm Shame. Mm hmm Shame. I think I definitely feel not good enough, and also just like I'm under a microscope. Being judged all the time? Yeah, being judged, having to stay in a perfect line and do these perfect things and I'm not. And so then I feel like I'm constantly being watched to be held up to these standards that I'm never going to live up to. Mm. Sounds exhausting. It is exhausting and can be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounds, it sounds sad, actually. <laughs> but I have the same... The thoughts, the uh, when I think about God's commands, I feel uh, extremely guilty and um, uh, full of shame mm -hmm. at, my, at, at my worst moment. And uh, um, yeah, guilty and shame yeah. <laughs> for me. Yeah. Okay. This sounds pretty awful. <laughs> but uh, we're just being genuine here, right? Yeah. We're just going to be authentic. We're not making anything up. You guys aren't making up stuff, are you? No. No. Okay. This is at our worst. So at our at, at our worst, and and at my best, I'm like oh, just a notch above this. So yeah, uh, I was just thinking. This I'm like, even at my best, I still kind of. I know. <laughs> it's easy to slip right back into all this stuff. So uh, yeah, okay, so. Um, Next question, number nine. Sometimes I wish God would. Oh, listen. Or answer my prayers. Or my pleads, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> heal my body, that kind of stuff for me. Listen, answer your prayers, heal your body. Heal my body is probably the number one. I, I wish he would do that too. Which heal I think your body. Is too. I think it is too, and that's why I don't ask for it that much because I don't see it happening. So I just leave it be. Yeah. How about you, Shay? Um, mine would be either remove or heal relationships in my life. That was my nice way of putting it. Okay. Remove or heal relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Remove or heal relationships in your life. Yep. And, and uh, I think sometimes um, the past is a little different for me now, but it's sometimes in the past, I just would uh, 
I would wish God would just take me out because of the ease factor. It'd be so much easier. Uh, and now I think sometimes I wish God would just um, be there. Yeah, exactly. So either one of those is one of my answers. Either take me out and get, you know, like, uh, let's go to heaven or, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm kind of, or be there. Be there would be. Yeah, be there would be a good one. Um, so then number 10 is I can really depend on God when? Uh, I put never. Okay. And then I put when I can feel or hear him, then I feel like I can depend him, depend on him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you can feel him or hear him, you can depend on him. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I like that too, but I don't do, have that happen very often. So I like jumped, I jumped on the same boat Noah's on and said, never. Yeah. And really, I really can't depend on him. I mean, it's no. embarrassing to admit. Yeah, um, it is embarrassing to admit. Um, it's hard to admit that. Like, but I think um, it's really common. Yeah. It, well, it is like in our podcast, at least. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's common with us three, uh, and I think it is like you said, Shay. It's common with all of us that if you, when we're struggling, especially at our best, at our worst moment, yeah, um, and our, at our worst moment, um, I'm feeling abandoned and hopeless and not close to God, and I'm feeling like you know, guilty and frustrated, and so yeah. It would make sense that I would want to depend on him. In my relationship, the leaven is in my relationship with God, I'm always sure that he will leave me. Mm. I'm always sure he's going to leave me or abandon me. Okay. I put uh, disappoints. Mm. But I like Shays. Yeah, uh, there's no right or wrong answers. It's just really yeah. Wrong. So, and um, and and I always and I and I put on mine was um, what I wrote down was, uh, I'm always sure he'll judge me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and these are just uh, we'll look at how this all plays out. So that there's there are no right or wrongs. They're just each person has their own feelings that come up and the thoughts that behind them. So well, yeah. I had a feeling that just came up too, just that in my relationship with God, I am always sure that he will make me do the hard road. Oh, that's great. I'm glad you said that. Great. Okay, we're, we've got three more questions. Uh, Twelve is... Uh, the one thing that frightens me about God is. Mm. Go ahead. Um, that he doesn't like me and he might tell me that. Because I already have a feeling that he doesn't like me, but I don't want him to tell me that he doesn't like me. So I think that that's the thing that frightens me is someday he's going to be like, yeah, you were a mistake. Mm. I never liked you. Mm. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I've always felt that, but yeah. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> that, hurts. that hurts just hearing that, hearing you say yeah. that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I want to, I want to start crying. <laughs> Uh, sorry okay so okay. Noah Noah how about you uh, um, frightens right. you about God yeah I, I guess the thing that would frighten me the most is if he'd kill my family uh, that would be terrifying mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes me cry um, yeah and I think that would uh, that would be the thing that would uh, one thing about God that frightens me most is um, uh, uh, 
I, I, for me, I, I'm not, I don't know what the right word is, 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 uh, what seems to be like a lack of compassion for suffering mm -hmm. with all the suffering I see, uh, it just on the ending. Uh, mm. And, uh, so I would say, uh, that he has no remorse, something like that. Yeah. Or no compassion. No compassion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. His lack of compassion. One thing that frightens me about him is his lack of compassion. Yeah. I think a lot of people are feeling that, especially right now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think you're right. So number, so 13, we're getting a really great handle on our emotional concept of God here. Uh, the, so, and we just got two more questions. Uh, God surprises me when he, when he actually shows up. When he actually shows up. Yep. And I'm going to put shows me love. Hmm. And and um, I'm gonna hop on Shay's bandwagon and say when he shows up or answers prayer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then uh, uh, the last question is the one thing I fear God will do is. Hmm. Leave me. <laughs> okay, Shay said, "Leave me." All of mine have the same. Yeah, and abandonment, abandonment yeah. issues. <laughs> <laughs> I think "leave me" too is a good one. I mean, even though sometimes I want him to leave me, but I feel like if he did leave me, I would probably just completely destroy myself. So I think that is a, that's a pretty big fear of mine mm -hmm. that I push him away so much. He should leave me, but mm. then he doesn't. So, but I, you always wonder, is this one sin I'm going to do going to be the one that finally he says, I'm done. I can't do it with you anymore. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> he takes off and sadly, I couldn't blame him, but I don't want it. Yeah. What about you, Steve? Um, I, um, the one thing I fear God would do is uh, kill people I love. Mm -hmm. Kill or kill or injure them. It doesn't matter either one. Kill or injure people I love. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard uh, to watch people in in pain. And oh my suffer. gosh, it's agonizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you could wish you could do it, you know, take it from them, but then they'd be in the same boat. They have to watch. I mean, Shay has to watch me nonstop in pain. So, yeah, I can only imagine what it does to her. And then same with me. I'm always in pain, but then I look at you, Steve, and I think, you know, I hate seeing you in pain. So it's a hard thing to watch people suffer. True. Yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> And so that's why my thought is that God you know, just get off his butt and heal everybody. Yeah. You know, eliminate yeah. pain. Like, like yeah. why does pain exist? The pain doesn't mm -hmm. have to exist. Uh, we just had that conversation. Yeah. Except for, uh, you know, like what the problem with that is it always has an unintended side of consequences, but we'll get into that later. So, yeah. so we've answered all our questions here on on our emotional concept of god test yes and so it, at this point uh, and you can do this with other people you can do this with each other or your um, kids or if you want to help your neighbors or people that are struggling at these times uh, because their emotional concept of god is way more powerful than our intellectual concept of god it's like that elephant and the little boy is like our you know like i could tell myself uh, with my mind, uh, you know, like we've talked about, you know, uh, you, we kind of talk back to these things as we're going, uh, but the emotions uh, are where the real power's at, and we'll be able to shift that spiritually. We can shift that. So I'll just, uh, can I just read uh, off um, 
the Shays concept, your emotional concept of God to you. And I'm just going to try and use mostly your words to describe at your worst moment uh, what God is like. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, what God is like and what you're like is like you're not worthy. You're unworthy. You're not good enough. Uh, and uh, you should be frightened of him. He's scary. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and not only is he scary, he's going to keep you in the dark and not talk to you, and and just you know he has these expectations for you, but he never tells you what they are, and he wants you to keep hanging on that thread, uh, of maybe sometime he'll leave you, especially if you're not worthy enough. So you really need to get get your act together and yeah. be worthy. Uh, and, um, and he's never going to give you your way ever. Mm -hmm. He wants your way to be hard, mm -hmm. not easy. And he, and, and at the same time he tells you that I, your way is going to be hard. He says, he comes up to you and he goes, Oh, Oh, just trust me. Yeah. <laughs> so, he, so he's kind of disingenuous too. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's kind of evil actually, because he's saying, uh, yeah, your your way's not going to be hard, but just trust me. Uh, I, then it'll be easy, but uh, then it's hard because his land is hard. Uh, number six was you really like God when uh, everything big goes your way. Everything big is in place, uh, and so those big things. Oh my gosh, he, he can he can crack your world by just letting one big thing mm -hmm. uh, yeah. fall apart. Yeah. And, and he does that. I mean, you've got money problems. You've got problems with your daughters and your relationship and your friends and mm -hmm. uh, your family. And the big things aren't all in line. And he and uh, you, you really can't enjoy him because he's kind of screwing with you. Yep. Uh, and, so, and question seven, one thing you would change would be... Uh, you would talk to him more and he would love that because if you talk to him more, he could just ignore you and put you on hold. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I don't, I don't understand why you don't want, why you want to avoid him. Uh, yeah. and then number eight, well, when I think about God's commands, uh, if nothing you can do is ever good enough for him. Yeah. Mm. Right. He's going to judge you. He's going to keep you under a microscope. He's, he's looking for the most minute flaw. And when he has it, he's going to show you and everybody else. And he's, and he's got you held up to these standards that are uh, godlike. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, he's like the inspector. Uh, so uh, number nine, um, Sometimes I wish God would uh, remove or heal a relationship, and that it is like totally God's plan to keep you in bad relationships. Yeah. Uh, just to teach right. you, you yeah. know, because if you, He's yeah. trying to make you more worthy uh, yeah. and he keep you in bad, painful, awful relationships to uh, punish you for not being worthy, and um, uh, He should punish you. Uh, he's a punishing kind of dude. Yeah. Um, and, and um, number nine, sometimes I wish God would uh, remove her. Oh, that's it. I already did that one. Ten, um, I can really depend on God when I feel him or hear him. And, and so he makes it sure. He makes sure you don't feel him. Mm -hmm. Make sure you don't hear him. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 11, uh, you can always count on the one thing that he'll always do uh, is leave, leave you. Yep. I mean, that's the thing you can count on. He's going to leave you and abandon you. Um, and the, the thing that frightens you is um, he, he actually doesn't like you. Mm -hmm. and, and someday, and we don't know when, but sometime he's going to actually tell you what a huge disappointment you are, yeah. uh, that you're a mistake, and uh, he wished he never created you. Mm -hmm. and uh and and then it surprises you when he actually shows up yeah yeah so he doesn't show up 
And like he's not going to show up. He in in our near emotions. It's like he doesn't show up. He never shows up. And and finally, the one thing if your God will do is leave you until he will leave you. And so in your emotions, you've got all those things running where he's going to leave you. He's not going to show up. He's not going to listen to you. <clears throat> you can't feel him or hear him. He holds you to an impossible standard. Mm -hmm. He's going to judge you and inspect you and find the minutest flaw and uh, not talk to you. And, and eventually he's going to tell you, you know, I don't really like you. I never have. Yeah. And so then, uh, your dad always would be a wise guy, you know, and say, uh, could we please have an altar call and would everybody like to come down to this God? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And so if, if those are the emotional concepts that we have, cause Shay, you're kind of, were a summary of me and those two with maybe a few differences, but not much. Uh, this guy, uh, if I, if I g gave you, asked you to describe him, uh, how would you describe this guy? This guy? Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, yeah. he's scary. This God. Yeah. Un unreliable. Abandoning. Not safe. Not safe. Mm -hmm. Careless. Someone you do not want to be friends with. Judgmental. Judgmental, critical. Mm hmm Unloving. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of um, messing with you, manipulative. Yeah. Yeah, makes empty promises. Yeah, like a tug of war. If you do this, I'll do this. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But never living up to their end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how who who would you say that describes? My dad. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Mm, I I mean past relationships I can relate to this because it's what I always felt like I deserved. Mm. So this definitely um relates to my dad a lot, but it also, I can relate it to past relationships because I've never felt worthy enough or I needed someone who, and I know this sounds crazy, but like, um, my oldest daughter's biological dad, it was almost like I needed him to be a liar and untrustworthy and he told me how unworthy I was to my face and he told me he didn't like me and that I was a mistake and all these things and I almost liked it because I felt like that's all I deserved mm. so I can see a lot of that in my past as well because if that's what God wants for me if that's how God feels about me then I don't deserve better yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, I, I like what you're saying, although it sounds mm, pr super sad to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and also angering. I'd like to find that guy right now and go crack his head. You and actually. me both. <laughs> <laughs> so just because I feel protective of you, it's like, oh my gosh, the things we do to each other that are yeah. mm -hmm. so... Mm, hard and uh, anyway so when you look at that why we you you just described a god emotional go characteristic of what god of what we believe he's like at our deepest heart level why would you want to go to a god like that some days i don't know <laughs> in all honesty there are days where it's like wait, why? But then when things aren't this, when things aren't the worst, there is so much promise and so much good. And he does show up and he does keep pursuing me even when I don't see it. And so it's those moments that you almost have to cling on to. And I think it's the same in like a relationship. There's always bad times and you can focus on those bad times. So I can focus on 
what I think God is going to be. And I can focus on the worst and he'll be that because that's all I'm going to see of him. But if I choose to step outside and look for those good things, then I can focus on that. And then it makes me press into him even more. So, yeah. So I, I really like what you're saying. That's, that makes so much sense. Um, and I'd, uh, like to like shift our focus a little bit, um, to not be, um, hoping that our cir- circumstances change, uh, but to challenge, uh, our challenge our beliefs, mm-hmm. and, um, because, uh, we're, we're looking at these, this emotional concept of God. A lot of people think this describes the devil. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you got right on it and recognized uh, this is really about my dad. But a lot of people think this mm-hmm. when we first go through this. Oh, my gosh, mm-hmm. this guy's evil. He's manipulative. Mm-hmm. He's threat, he, threat, he tells you with one thing and he does another. Mm-hmm. He's, he's going you know, to tell you that yeah, I never really liked you. Uh, yeah. you know, so a lot of people think that that describes the, the devil. And so then when we have, we recognize like you did, well, this describes, you know, like parts of my experience with my dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like to frame it that way because it's not, you know, my dad's got, uh, super high standards for everybody around him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he can be super critical. Right. Yeah. And so that. Uh, I've, I came up with an emotional concept that's similar to this, that's, uh, you know, pretty impossible to please and uh, judgmental, critical, uh, tells me to do things that are impossible. Uh, and, uh, and so, but that was my experience of him. My brother had a completely different experience of him. And we, we grew up right in the same house. And, and uh, so, um, so what, what, and what, I'm, what I'm saying is uh, we're not using this exercise uh, to blame our parents or authority figures in our life. Mm-hmm. We're using it to actually get free from that mm-hmm. uh, because now, so Shay, can I ask, or Noah, maybe, do you see any distortions uh, in these beliefs? Go ahead. So there's, like, there's some typical distortions that I have that um I don't know um I guess for me would be the I guess shame is that what you mean like what do you what do you well like like if if um uh that uh, he doesn't care. Is there a distortion in that? Because that's like one of my thoughts. He does doesn't care. Right. For for question four, sometimes they get angry with God when he doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, and so I so the bottom line there is like I'm saying to him, I'm saying to myself, uh, God should care, right? Mm-hmm. He should care. Yeah. But he doesn't. Right. So. So the idea that would for me would be to challenge that and say, well, I think should statements are always distorted in one sense. They're not in one another, but there but there's a distortion there that I've got expectations, mm. and the thing that's causing me my pain is that I've got expectations that aren't being met. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're my expectations; they're not anybody else's. And so I've got this great big huge statement should statement for God. God should be like, I want him to be, which I think would really be cool. (laughs) Except for he's not like I want him to be. He's like he is. Uh, And so, uh, so that, so that's kind of a distortion, right? Yeah. That I've got this should statement that God should be like I expect him to be. Yeah. So I can look at that and say, well, okay, well, I could change that belief because the belief is uh, my belief that's running deep within me is God should do what I want. And, and should be like I expect him to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I can challenge that and um, look at like the truth. Well, yeah. And I think it, it might go along with this. I don't know if this is what you're kind of saying, but we were having this conversation too of about 
when I have a thought about something, even if it's a sin or whatever it is, I always sit there and think, okay, is this my God brain thinking what this is, or is this my religious brain thinking what it is? Does that make sense? I think I think I think so. Because my I always go, uh, you know, I'm still stuck in that um, behavior. So when I think I am doing everything right, I'm good with God. When my behavior is not doing good, he wants nothing to do with me. Hmm. So I still struggle with that even today. So, you know, like when I'm going through something, I'm always trying to figure out if, is this God wanting me to go this route? Or is this my, just my religious brain telling me everything is wrong? Um, you're doing everything wrong, what you're doing right now, and you better just get down on your knees and start praying. Does that make sense, or am I? Yeah, no, it makes sense to me. I, I'd love to know what your conclusion is, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still, I, I'm challenging thoughts more when they come into my head, basically, instead Ooh. of just going with it. And now I'm kind of like, okay, what is this? Is this? Is this works or is this shoulds or is this um, behavior? Because mm -hmm. I don't want any part of that stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I want to just go with Jesus and walk with him, even if I am sinning. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's, that might sound really bad to our listeners. Uh, but I, but I'm right there with you. Uh, I, I want to walk hand in hand with you when you're sinning. I wouldn't want to be any other place because he doesn't ever back away from us no he never backs away and i can i can actually invite him into it and see what he's going to do with it with me so if we were to um can we shift gears just a little bit yeah, sorry and that no that was really great that was really great i'm glad you said that but if we want to if we wanted to follow up with this and say change the way we think about him because we've got this gut level thing going on us not to just make it into a, a mental exercise but to move it from our head to our heart to move it from the bible to our heart mm -hmm. uh, if we if we were to we know god is love yeah uh, i think we would agree with that and then and maybe most of our listeners would agree with us that the scriptures tell us and and i'm convinced that god is love 100 percent even though my emotions tell me some wild other mm -hmm. emotional bs yeah. uh, it's it's really the fact is and god is love mm -hmm. and so if we were to look at the first corinthians 13 that love passage and and we were to say okay instead of god's being uh, cruel and mean and not there for us uh, and i don't know if you guys have that in front of you or not or um but that would be something that our listeners it'd be great to look that up right yeah she's looking it up right now and so um if if you could like read us the first uh passage where it says where he starts to say love is patient Yep. That would be great. That would be great. Working on it. Okay. So love is patient and love is kind. So while we're so while we're doing this to to challenge the the our crazy emotions, um, and let's instead of instead of uh, reading the word love, let's put in the word God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So God is patient and God is kind and he does not envy and he does not boast and he is not proud. Um, he does not dishonor others. He's not self-seeking. He's not easily angered and he keeps no record of wrongs. God does not delight in evil, but he rejoices with the truth. 
and he always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. And I can keep going if you want. I don't know how far you want me to go. No, that's, I think that's a good start. And our listeners can dive into that. And uh, I would say not just read it with um, our minds, but let those things sink into our hearts. So Noah, as Shay was reading that, I noticed that you were touched by a couple of those things. What was going on? Yeah, I'm trying not to cry right now, but you know, (laughs) yeah, I mean, it goes completely against what I just wrote down of what yeah. my emotions think of him mm. and what he really says he is, which is mm. you know, pretty, pretty awesome. And I don't know, it just, if you actually let it sink into your heart, it does, it definitely does do something to you. Mm. It, um, yeah, it definitely it makes you feel like you're pretty special. So when he, you, I noticed that you grunted uh, when Shay r- r- said uh, he doesn't keep a record of wrongs, mm-hmm. what, what were you feeling like at that moment? Uh, free, actually. Mm. For some reason, just at that exact moment, I started, <laughs> it was kind of weird, like, you know, just a, a rush of thoughts came to my head of all these sins I hold on to. Mm. And I think I should hold on to them because they're bad. Mm-hmm. And you know, knowing now that he doesn't hold on to him, it does something. Now I I I feel like I should get done with this podcast and go take a walk and <laughs> and uh, you know let those go. Uh, I, I like that, but there's probably hard to do. <laughs> not to not to be a de- not to be a devil's advocate, but there's probably uh, there and why it's why it's hard to do is because those things say such great things about you yeah right that you mm-hmm. wouldn't just uh, have us have this great big huge bucket of thoughts about the sins you do and then you would just easily let go of that mm-hmm. what what would they say about you that's pretty awesome um i guess i don't do things just Willy nilly, when I when I do sin, I I take it serious. I think about it a lot. I I look at every angle of it, why I did it, how to prevent it again. Mm-hmm. Even though the next day I'll do it again, you know. Yeah. But but then that, that I guess that's what keeps my focus. Yeah. So sin instead of just in. Instead of doing that, going just to God and knowing that he's not holding on to that stuff. He's not, you know, I guess he's in my head, he's not putting all my sins in the Noah backpack, you know, and he has a Steve backpack and a Shea backpack. And so when, whenever I mess up, he gets to open that backpack up and remind me of everything I've done wrong. Just yeah. Which, he doesn't have that. It's pretty, it, it's freeing for me. Yeah, it's freeing for me too. D- did you notice though the good reasons you did have to hang on to it and to not let go? No. What were they? <laughs> the, the good reasons. Uh, you, well, you you said it shows that you're take it seriously. Mm-hmm. You're not just a willy nilly guy who's going to sin indiscriminately and not, not take your relationship with God seriously and. Mm-hmm. Uh, the most important thing, I think, reason to hang on to your sins is you said it keeps your focus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess if uh, that would be my question, and uh, in, in all sincerity, I think that's such a valuable thing for you to have to keep holding on to your sins because it keeps your focus, mm-hmm. shows you that you're such a really stand up, genuine guy. Uh, um, why would you want to let go of those sins? I mean, why would you want to let go of keeping a record of your own wrongs? Right. Yeah. And I'm asking, I'm asking. Yeah. I don't, I guess I don't know the answer of why I wouldn't want to let him go. 
Do you have any opinions? The comfort zone. Yeah, I guess the comfort blanket, right? Who would you be without it? Yeah. Who would you be without the sins that hold you back? Yeah. Like all of us have. Like all of a sudden you wouldn't have that struggle or you wouldn't have those issues. So then who would you be in true freedom? I think that true freedom is so terrifying sometimes. Although, yes, we want it so badly because we destroy ourselves and others that was the other thing that when you were talking of not keeping a record book like we keep a record book of our sins my neighbor's sins my husband's sins my kids sins like you keep a record of Mm -hmm. everybody so that you don't have to look at yourself of oh i may screw up but that guy over there he's doing crazy stuff and that girl she's you know it's we all keep these records on ourselves and our peers but really, I think it's only because it's such a comfort zone that it's so terrifying that what would true freedom really look like? Mm-hmm. Who would I be if I weren't judging my neighbor? Who would I be if I woke up and not judged myself and stepped into that freedom every morning? Yeah, you might not recognize yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I th- I think what you're saying is so important because it's not a... And I think this is the mistake I've made in the past using this is uh, we would think that, you know, you hear this one description of God that sounds so awful, but then you contrast it with 1 Corinthians 13 and you would think, well, heck yeah, we all want to jump into believing that he's like that. But actually we don't. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that you guys just brought up that are uh, really great reasons to not enter into that freedom we have yeah. uh, that until I think uh, for me, from my perspective right now uh, could change tomorrow, but from it could be, it'll the reason we struggle with the same thing today that we struggled with yesterday and the day before that is because we haven't ever looked at all those great reasons to hang on to mm-hmm. this emotional concept of God. They're powerful. It, it seems powerful to me. Yeah. Uh, Shay, Shay is is uh, that comfort of judging your neighbors and everybody else? Is that a a powerful or weak motive? Well, it's a weak motive for sure. But is it powerful in you though? It feels powerful, mm-hmm. but it's out of weakness. Uh huh. So it's I'm going to have the power and judge you before you judge me. Yeah, it sounds powerful. A little better. Well, for sure. I think that's the only reason why we judge ourselves Mm -hmm. or our peers is to make ourselves feel better. If we didn't know, if we didn't know anybody else's struggles or see anything else, then we would have to think that we were the most worthless people. Mm -hmm. But by judging other people and seeing all of that, it's like, oh, see, I'm not so bad. We're good. And some of our listeners may actually feel or think they're the most worthless people because yeah. uh, they might judge themselves much more harshly uh, than they do others. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, so I think that's, uh, I just don't want to gloss over the, this part because it's so powerful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it seems to me like it's real. Does it seem like these are real motives to, or are they just imaginary? No, they, I think they're real they're motives. Real, yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, so they're so they're powerful and they're they're, they're real. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, and for us to like skip skip just go oh, uh, I'm not going to believe that anymore. I'm yeah. just now I'm just going to believe God is love and He loves me. Yeah, uh, it, it doesn't hasn't worked that way for me, and so that's why it's so important for me to like look at the advantages of well, what's the advantage of of like Noah said, I really like that, that it keeps my focus. Well, uh, so for you to get let go of that belief that God's got the Noah backpack and is filling it up, Mm -hmm. checking it, and uh, uh, you're going to have to like be able to mm, talk back to that thought. Uh, And um, you kind of drew a blank when I asked you that. Mm-hmm. you know so like why would you want to give it up yeah and uh and i'm saying that not that i think it's a great idea that you keep it 
Uh, I'm saying it, that I think that uh, you would need to be able to like go, hey, uh, number one, like Shay said, I'm destroying my life and everybody else's life. Mm. It sucks that I did this backpack so heavy for me, I can't carry it anymore. I don't want it. Yeah. You know, it's worth it to me. Uh, I'll trust him to keep my focus without having this backpack of saying it, sin on my on me. Maybe there's some other way. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I think those are things that, where our listeners and us, we can look at each one of these things and go, well, what's, what's the advantage of keeping it? Because if we wouldn't keep the, believing these same things if we didn't have an advantage, if they weren't doing something protecting us or letting us look down on others. I mean, I love uh, the moral superiority. That's so powerful, such a huge force. Uh, for me that it's it's nice to be able to look down on other people like you Shay said uh, if i feel uh, superior i wonder why <laughs> yeah. even though even though we're all equal or or different you know yeah uh, so so I, so i'm not exactly sure how much time we have left but but for our listeners and for us we can look at all the great reasons to hang on to these and then if you want to i would say don't let go of them because they're important. They're your mm -hmm. values, or you're really your values mm -hmm. uh, that you, if if you just like let go of them, um, you'll be right. You'll hold. You'll come back to them again. But yeah. they, you, you have to recognize what they're doing for us, mm -hmm. and then go. I, I maybe I want to keep them. Maybe I don't. Maybe I want to keep some of them. Maybe I just. I, maybe I. Maybe it's important to hang on to that one. That uh, you know, I'm going to keep a record of, change it up a little bit. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep a record of just half my wrongs or 10% of my wrongs. I'd feel good enough. Yeah. And so I can, then I can let, let that go and go, and go, okay, God can, he's my shepherd. It's his job to keep my focus, uh, not my job to keep my focus. But keeping your focus is so important. Uh, yeah. you, you wouldn't want to just totally let that go, I wouldn't think. No. No, I don't think so. Mm -mm. so so what do you guys think about this exercise and well i was just gonna say i was just gonna say like i guess for me now that you were talking about it it's i guess it's another way to look at it i i guess i don't mind holding on to my my sins because now it kind of makes me feel good that i'm not holding on to him and god's not holding on to him mm -hmm. i'll hold on to him god won't you know, they're my comfort. I can still hold on to them. He doesn't even care about them. He's <laughs> holding on to them. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Sounds real to me. Yeah, so now I get to hold on to him still, but now I know he's not hammering me even more on him. Yeah, yeah. If anybody's hammering you, it's you. Yeah, it's just me. Yeah. Exactly. And if you and if you, if that helps you feel comfortable and keep your focus, uh, why not? yeah and like you said if if down the road i only want to do 10 percent, is that good enough maybe i can get down to five percent you know who knows whatever you want yeah, yeah. it's your exactly. i can kind of control that and yeah. he just wants me to walk with him so yeah, yeah it, it, i really like what you're saying because it's so it's really what we're talking about is um acceptance Yes. We're talking about you accepting yourself, carrying your backpack with sins. Mm -hmm. I really like what you're saying there. It's like, I, oh, I can do that. And you accepting God, not as a distorted God, but a God who's, who doesn't even keep any track of your, no. uh, and you're, and you're accepting him in a, in a, as he is, you know, yeah. in, that, in that way that he doesn't keep a record of your wrongs. And, and you were good with both. I really like what you're saying, Noah. All right. Well, good. Well, thanks, Steve, for going. Do you have any, does anyone have any closing thing to say? I mean, I, it really helped me. I don't know if it helped anybody else, but. No, for sure. I, I liked it. Thanks for going through it. And it's fun to do this with people and you get to know each other. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of an intimate exercise. Uh, to say what we're doing at our worst yeah so thank you guys for being so open and vulnerable and yeah you too uh, genuine 
Yeah. I wouldn't. Ex of course, I wouldn't expect anything different from being with you guys. I just. Of course not. <laughs> the one thing you can count on us for. Yes. <laughs> so that that and your big hearts of love. Well, you too. And yeah. thanks again, Steve. Thanks for the listeners. And just so the listeners know, now on abidinglife.com, right on the main page, uh, we have a devotional now. It has does uh, seven days devotional. So it uh, will reload, I think, every Monday morning. So just to let everybody know, devotional's back on the website. Thank you, Noah. All right. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Love you. Steve. Thanks, Jay. Love you. All right. Bye.